welcome to Health Live at Seniors today. We are delighted to have here with us today, Dr. Mihir Bapat. Dr. Bapat is the director of the Nanavati Max Institute of Spine Surgery, which is in Mumbai, and a leading spine surgeon for over two, de two decades. He specializes in minimally invasive spine surgery, degenerative spine fractures, tumors, and deformities. He's received many global and Indian awards. Dr. Bapat is a postgraduate teacher for the Mumbai University, the, the Diplomat National Board, and the Asia Pacific AO Spine. He has several international publications to his credit, more than 100 odd citations and international presentations. Welcome to Health Live at Senior Today, Dr. Bapat. Thank you. Uh, I welcome you all to this uh, interesting discussion on the myths of spinal pain. I'm, I'm sure everybody's scared of their own backs. You know, everybody talks about having a backbone and uh, do you have a spine or you don't, but um, the, 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 fa the fact is, and, and this, you know, the, the registrations that we received, the feedback that we received to your session just indicates, and it's a worrying thing that people are, have worries about the spine. Uh, doctor, this is a question which I ask everyone through the pandemic, how's how do you assess the situation right now? We've had approximately 10 days after the Ganpati, says, Ganpati festival has concluded. Uh, are there any worries in terms of hospital beds being occupied more, more than, more than uh, 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 you know, earlier? No, I think uh, this, is, this is, if you see the trend over the last two years, this period has probably been the best uh, in the last two years. From about uh, October to about February, uh, we see a sudden dip in the COVID numbers. The hospital beds are all vacant. And uh, you have people uh, growing in confidence in relation to their other problems, the non-COVID ones. But February comes and uh, we've seen the first two waves. And uh, I sincerely pray that we don't see another one now. Yes, absolutely. How is it at Nanavati Hospital? Is it that's one of the you know leading hospitals, and it has uh, doing fairly well now uh, in in terms of uh, uh, the COVID preparedness, etc. Is it? Yeah, in the sense, uh, it's it's done a wonderful job in segregating its COVID and non-COVID sections. You know, we kept the COVID in a separate building and uh, the non-COVID in a separate building right from the beginning. So this has allowed us to actually sort of go ahead with our non-COVID work right from the beginning and give full commitment to our COVID work as well. Uh, it's actually shown a path to most of the institutes that you need to segregate because uh, the non-COVID uh, ailments like spine, uh, you know, uh, people keep suffering at home just because they're scared of coming to a hospital. So you need, henceforth, you need to have these two subjects or topics in separate buildings altogether to keep that comfort level. And how is it for, you know, for you as a, as, as a medical pr practitioner, because you are on the front line and you, you know, the fact of the, of the matter is that the person whom you are treating could well be, uh, uh, you know, uh, be, be uh, carrying the virus. Oh, yes. It, it, you know, during the first wave, it was quite a scare. Really, nobody knew what to do. And we didn't know whether a mask would protect us during surgeries. Uh, uh, the, the operation theaters were all sort of uh, talked about uh, for the last two years as high risk zones for trans uh, transfer of COVID infection. But nevertheless, we kept going. I think, I think uh, most of the surgeons across the world found a way to uh, keep going. The numbers were less in the beginning, but now people have developed their own confidence. And uh, even the doctors have evolved and we've, we've managed to find a system where we can beat COVID and go ahead with our non-COVID work. I know there has to be some method in the madness. Right? Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and a certain amount of courage uh, to just, uh, just persist with what you like, I guess. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mihir Bapat, for this, uh, uh, for being here. And over to you uh, for uh, uh, your presentation on spine care for senior citizens. Those of you who have questions, 
please put them in the q and a tab and uh, as always uh, mention your gender as well as your age and uh, so that dr bapat will be able to answer the question more effectively over to you doctor uh i'm going to talk about uh, the myths and the reality of back pain i think all of us are scared of our own backs like i said in the beginning and we know that india is a huge sea of uh, people i won't say patients uh, this is what the rural india is to you and the urban india is to you uh, we have found newer and newer ways of uh, developing back pain and uh, like we just discussed it's it's the corporate philosophy so uh, we keep multitasking and uh, eventually when we get a back pain in our daily hours of work we are confused there are so many therapies you have ayurveda you have homeopathy you have allopathy you have physiotherapy and you do just don't know what to do so uh, uh, actually somewhere really we've gone wrong we thought that we evolved but uh, we now have gone back to sort of looking at ourselves as monkeys all over again and uh, actually we were most comfortable when we were like this we were balanced on four limbs it was like a table top the spine was perfectly balanced on four legs and this is actually the time when the back pain is the least and when we start standing up at around the age of 1 the back pain starts evolving because the body weight has to be balanced on two limbs the problem is that the brain needs to be evolved in fact one of the highest incidences of back pain is in orangutans and gorillas because they stand up on two legs but the problem is that they can't express so uh, it is a brain the analysis of our brain that describes the back pain to us all of us have to understand that there are no happiness receptors in the body pain is more like a protective mechanism if i go to a cold place i would feel cold if i go to a hot place i would feel hot if i try to cut myself my own body tries to stop me so it is it is the intensity of pain that tells us whether it is significant or not so it is more like an emotional response and it has to be kept brief either by self or by therapy and it should not be allowed to continue over a period of time for example uh, if i get hurt and my young son walks in front of me i immediately control my pain and i say yes yes it's okay so this is how i try to control my pain and i try to show others that i'm okay uh the beauty of an indian population is that as compared to the western population which you see on the left indians always tend to keep smiling aha ah, 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 you know uh, i have back pain but it's okay i keep carrying on and this is particularly true of our ladies who keep working 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 all throughout their lives and never complain of any kind of pain however a chronic pain cycle if you just allow the pain to keep going on it is ultimately going to affect your personality and a chronic pain sufferer always resorts to different kind of therapies different kind of medications yet finds it very difficult to control his and uh, her own pain so luckily when we talk of spinal pain till the age of 30 years we are all supremely athletic it's like a new car that we find ourselves as and we keep running jumping skipping hopping till about 30 years and the pain is more due to over activity it's it's sports or otherwise and this this pain is called as mechanical pain it's a muscular pain that gets relieved with rest uh, a body follows a machine law that means that if i want to work more then this machine needs to be serviced on a regular basis the spine and our joints are only for movements the movements need to be controlled with muscles which need to be flexible and strong muscle is the only structure in the body that can be kept strong till the age of 80 and that is why people at the age of 60 and 70 can run a marathon that's due to their muscles now the common misconceptions about spine is that everything that is seen on an mri post 35 years or 40 years is called as a slip disc it's not a slip disc a slip disc is a complication normally the mri looks normal in all of us till the age of 35 but post 35 there are certain changes 
in our MRI, which are called as degenerative changes or spondylosis or spondylitis in common language. That means that the strength of the disc or the cushions in the spine will start reducing. This is completely separate as compared to these situations where a disc has come out of position or the disc has narrowed down with age. So these are complex situations where a spondylosis is a normal situation with age and it will keep worsening as time goes by. So when we use our spines like this and we are going to keep using this machine, obviously the machine is going to rub off. But a complication is something where the nerve is getting pinched. So that is called as age-related nerve narrowing. So it, it looks like this, as you see here. So that is how the nerve gets pinched. Or it could be a slip disc, as you can see in this picture. So the disc tends to jump out of position and it pinches a nerve. So the first one is not a complication. The second and the third ones are. So uh, there are common uh, sort of terms which are used for uh, uh, describing spondylosis, ghisavat, gap pad gaya, uh, uh, spine ki curvature straight ho gai, and meri disc ghis gai. So all these are common terms of describing just your age. Uh, similar to your external photo changing. That means as you gray with time, your MRI is also going to change with time. And those changes have to be accepted with age. So, uh, so uh, like I mentioned before, it is the muscles that one need to focus on. Muscle is the pillar of your body. And so long as your muscles are strong, you keep going. You can work for 10 hours without getting exhausted or without painful. However, certain activities with time are going to get restricted progressively sitting on the floor, sitting cross-legged, bending work, uh, uh, kneeling, stooping, all these activities are going to get more and more difficult with time. And one should not find this to be quite unusual. It's not that it's happening to you. It's happening to everyone. Uh, many people say that when I get up, when I bend, I'm tilted. That tilt is because of a muscle spasm, because the muscles are unable to control the activity loads that you put on your muscles and it is called as a scoliotic list which is due to a muscle spasm which is one of the most commonest injuries that you can get during common activities and it's very scary because it's extremely painful for the first three to five days so uh, whenever you get back pain the first common thing which i've heard is that uh, someone told me stop doing everything Really, is that the solution? Is rest the solution to your problems? So you know you can do it, but you don't want to do it because of the scare. So uh, I was used to exercises, but I'm fine. I stopped my exercises, but I still have pain. So eventually what's going to happen is that you, every, all of us are going to get deconditioned. The muscles are going to get weaker. We're going to keep eating and the weight is going to keep increasing. As the weight increases, the load on your muscles is going to keep increasing and the pain will increase. So uh, unnecessary hours of rest is never the solution to your problem. And don't try to cheat yourself. Tolerate a little bit of pain. There is no single solution to back pain. It's always servicing your own machine again and again and again so that it runs very, very smoothly. So if you put on weight, it's a very simple philosophy. Uh, if you put on weight on one side, your boat is going to tilt and the amount of effort that is going to require to keep you straight is going to keep increasing. So the number one cause of back pain is with age is your own body weight. So the body weight is going to keep changing your posture. All of us tend to get a little bit of hump. As we keep bending forwards, the effort on our muscles is going to keep increasing and the back pain is going to keep increasing with time. Lazy postures, computers, it's called as a computer disease. You adopt all kinds of lazy postures when you are sitting at a desk, when you are sitting with your laptops, you are on your sofa, you sit in awkward positions. All of them tend to affect your muscles because it's a load on your muscles. 
so always sit correctly and work keep taking breaks from your sitting position never sit in uh, in on a desk more than 40 minutes at a time get up walk for 2 minutes relax your muscles and again sit down uh, never try to bend as if you were a 20 year old all throughout life don't try to bend only from your back it's always safer to bend your knees relax your hamstrings relax your back muscles when you are trying to pick up an object uh pillows that's always a contention should i use an ortho pillow should i use a special pillow uh, no a pillow is something that should keep your neck in line with your shoulders so too thin a pillow is not good too thick a pillow is not good the pillow has to be customized according to the size of your shoulder so this is the size of my pillow if i keep it here my neck would be in line with my shoulders so that's that's how you sleep at night is sleeping on the floor a good thing when you have back pain absolutely not changing cushions changing surfaces is never good for your muscles because your muscles are used to a particular sleeping posture however your mattress should keep your body alignment in a straight line and obviously a mattress which is worn out is never good because it's going to stress your muscles all over again so suddenly people wake up at the age of 50 and start feeling now is the time to exercise so suddenly they get up and start running 20 kilometers 30 kilometers start playing all kinds of sports this is not good because your muscles will just not take that load obviously your pain will increase so as the pain increases people suddenly give up everything and go back to bed rest so you, the rest should be minimal you have physiotherapy techniques you have acupressure acupuncture massages electric current tractions heat therapies needle therapies vibration therapies kkts qts so there are about 150 therapies that can relax your muscles so that you are back on your feet exercising uh, there are injections which are given in the spine to minimize your pain these are only for special situations and injection commonly advised for common type of back pain is never good so it should be a little bit of sort of courage that tells you that okay this is muscular pain i need to build up my muscles because without pain there is no gain and that is what exercises is all about exercise means effort exercise means sweating and exercise means pain so without lifting 2 kilos in my gym i cannot lift a bag which is 15 kilos so that's that's how it's going to be so begin with walking as a simple exercise it should be brisk walking for about 30 minutes do that for 2 3 months then go on to lying down exercises so that your body weight is not directly on your back and then you can graduate to anti gravity exercises and then finally to sporting exercises so this is how you go and if the pain persists that means you just can't exercise you just can't do your routine activities then it is time to visit a spinal surgeon like i keep telling 80 to 90% of the patients you don't require a doctor you require a yoga instructor or you require a gym instructor and that is how the back pain has to be managed thank you thank you uh, thank you dr bapat for this presentation I think we've lost a video. Yeah. Yeah. So I just hope um, people have a. Oh, you have you have answered perhaps most of the questions that people could ask. Uh, but there have been a few questions, so I'm going to uh, close them here. Uh, one of the first questions which has come in is uh, from Zareen Shroff, who asks. Uh, Of late, I'm having a lot of pain in my back, and the pain goes to my thighs. I get severe pain. I do not like to take painkillers. I'm very regular with my exercises, and very careful with my diet. Wonder what has instigated this pain? Please guide. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think I think uh, this is one of the uh, pains that requires an investigation because uh, you have been very particular about your diet. you have made an attempt to keep your muscles strong 
and in spite of all this a new pain has come which goes from your back into your thighs so whenever the pain goes into the legs that means you have a pulling sensation or a throbbing sensation in the leg it means that your nerves are irritable so if if it is really becoming bothersome during your routine activities of sitting standing walking traveling whatever you do then you require to investigate it and i think the best investigation and the safest one to do is an mri the mri will tell you whether there is a complication or there is not so if the mri comes clear then then you don't need to worry and you are back to your exercises and your routines then we can find a way to tackle this pain very very easily but an mri should be the first investigation of choice thank you uh, i think zarin shah has another question which is does lying on a dentist chair aggravate the back and uh, yes because uh, it's not a posture which your back is used to so suppose you've been on a dental chair for about a, a procedure like a root canal which takes about 40 minutes then then your back can go into spasm like i said your muscles can give up and uh, you can be very very painful after after that procedure for about 5 days and the uh, next the next question is secondly is massage and acupressure good for the back so uh, like i just mentioned these are all therapies to relax your muscles so if i work throughout the day i get tired towards the evenings if i take a massage obviously i'll feel good but it's not a therapy to increase the effort level so so massage as a temporary therapy for pain is okay but if you want to look at it as a uh, sort of a therapy to cure back pain no it's not the problem doctor is that most of the masseurs who are there who are not are not very trained they're not medically trained or you know trained in various physiotherapy uh, 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 you know norms that you follow uh, and and that's where the problem is so is there is there some kind of advice that you would like to give in terms of the kind of masseur you would go for is there some kind of a certificate that you should look at etc uh really really uh, in india there is no course uh, that really uh, there is no teaching program for your masseurs i think it's all a temporary sort of a certificate which is procured by getting trained in a particular art of uh, uh, therapy uh, but what one needs to understand is that massage from light to deep massages to chiropractors to uh, you know the various kinds of uh, deep pressure massages finally they are like a double edged sword either either they relax your muscles make you feel good but they can also make you worse if someone tries to manipulate your joints a little too hard for you and one has to be very very careful we have patients who've got slip discs we have patients who've got seriously injured during massages So, if there is pain during your therapy, please don't continue. Ask them to stop. Thank you. Uh, the doctor has a question from Eric Pereira, who says, "I get pain in the back when I sneeze. Initially, it was pretty bad, but now it has become a little less." Uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, uh, this this is because uh, a sneeze or a cough is a jerk, and your muscles have to be really very flexible to control that jerk. uh if you have something like a bronchitis and you keep coughing then your muscles tend to get inflamed and you feel a lot of pain so that's the commonest pain which you get during a bout of cough sometimes if you've had a slip disc that means that the jerk will go inside and harm your disc then your body will warn you about it so a patient with a slip disc always has excruciating pain when he or she coughs but uh, if the pain has got better then 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 obviously it it was temporary so it was a muscle pain doctor question is that what does one do if one has a stiff neck or a creak in the neck this could have happened because of a of a hand under the pillow or the pillow being folded and and used for for sleep should one do anything about it at all or just leave it yeah so it's it's a temporary uh, muscle spasm due to inflammation of your joint and muscle so uh, simple surface therapies like heating pads ice packs 
a little bit of medication if you are comfortable taking tablets for about three to five days that doesn't harm you at all if you're not allergic to it so uh, a simple bit of physiotherapy like deep heat or they give you know the surface currents these are all to relax your joints and muscles the pain is temporary and one does not need to be concerned about thanks we have a question from an anonymous attendee who says uh, i am 75 even after doing my mri my back pain is not okay they say it is age related only last two ribs uh, last two ribs are joined she is 75 and female so yes uh, uh, so uh, what has happened here is that over a period of time because uh, like i showed in my presentation finally our own cells are like a machine we have used this machine for 75 years so obviously there will be wear and tear and obviously the machine is uh, sort of making a little bit of noise but if you want the pain to be controlled then the only therapy for you is controlled exercises which should happen on a regular basis and in a graduated fashion and a good trained physio can make a good difference to you over a period of 6 months starting today next uh, another question who is it's a lady who is age 83 uh what is the outcome of surgery in a woman of 83 years having lumbar and cervical canal stenosis with peripheral neuropathy with difficulty in walking and backache yeah so uh, this is a very interesting question because last week uh, we have uh, uh, we have had three young people who are 83 80 and 81 who have undergone uh, lumbar surgeries and cervical spine surgeries so it's not the age that matters uh, finally as we grow older our risk of anesthesia will increase with time because of our medical conditions so if you have been an active individual suppose i have been i have been a walker i have been walking 2 uh, kilometers every day and because of a serious spinal condition i cannot walk even 5 minutes so obviously my lifestyle has completely changed and if i am fit to take anesthesia with a small microscopic surgery you can still go back to 2 kilometers of walking as early as a week after surgery so 81 per se is not a contraindication it depends upon how fit you are to undergo surgery doctor the question on sneeze by the way was asked by a former patient of yours who who uh, you had performed the surgery on in 2013 yeah uh, at kopila ben Yeah, yeah. Uh okay so there's a question from Mr SC Koti who says is jogging okay for people reaching 70 Yes uh, uh it's uh, there's a difference between sprinting and light jogging light jogging is just ahead of brisk walking So uh, it's it's a pretty good exercise it's a very smooth rhythmic repetitive exercise and uh, if you if you do for about 30 minutes of jogging it's good even for the knees because jogging would impact the knees more than the back so first concern is always the knee right thank you we have a question from vivekanand sinha i am vivekanand mihir from bihar was operated uh, was operated upon the c3 c4 level by dr kare in 2015 but i am unable to stand on my own without two person support waist cannot lift my body what to do Mm, yeah so this seems to be a real uh, problem here because i think uh, uh, the surgery was done because uh, there was a pressure on the spinal cord and the spinal cord was weakening uh, so you were losing power below the level of your neck so unfortunately what every surgery aims to do is that it can only decompress or remove the pressure on the nerve and create a situation where the nerves can recover and this recovery can happen only in the first one and a half to two years and unfortunately if uh, you find it difficult to stand and walk i would really advise you to undergo a very good neuro rehab which can really help you to tone up your muscles use whatever power you have to the best possible level thank you we have a question from Sujata Narsay who says I am 68 years old I take daily walks for about an hour I find that the pain in my body keeps moving in a sense sometimes my neck is bad sometimes the back 
or the needs? What is the right thing to do? So I think uh, what one needs to understand is that walking is the most convenient exercise. However, uh, our body has three rings. So if you imagine my shoulders, so when I do my computer work, my driving work, my household work, my shoulder muscles will come into play. The exercises for the shoulder muscles are different. So these are our school exercises that we used to do. Then the second ring is called as the abdominal core. Now, this is the central pillar of your body. These exercises are different. And the third ring is your pelvic ring, which you exercise during walking. So the only exercise that you seem to be doing is your legs. Your legs have remained strong, but your upper body pain keeps moving because these muscles are deconditioned. So you should select other forms of exercises as well. Thank you. We have a question from Mr. Shankar Chavan, who is 82. He says, so far, no back, no back pain. In future, to avoid in future, which yogasan is advisable? So uh, uh, I think, I think you're better than the most. So um, I, at the age of 82, I would really tell you to uh, keep doing your horizontal exercises. And these exercises also can be quite uh, tough in the sense you have push-ups, you have planks, you have dips, you have leg raises, you have abdominal crunches. Somebody will have to adjust these exercises according to your age and your fitness levels because you seem to be a very, very fit guy and you can really do a higher level of exercise than most. And that is what is going to keep you fitter, maybe uh, uh, another uh, 17, 20, 30 years so that you can inspire all of us. Uh, we have a question from Colonel Dugal who says, I'm 77 male. I have been sleeping on my left side for eight years. I get pain in my thighs and shoulders when I get, when I get up and walk and then I feel relieved. I do yoga and walk. Should I continue like this? Yes, because this is just a posture stiffness pain. Uh, uh, like I said, every posture should be changed in 30 to 40 minutes. So even, even when we lie down, without we realizing it, the body tends to rotate. So if you keep sitting in one posture, your muscles get fixed in that posture. And when you try to change it after two hours, three hours, six hours, then you have to overcome that stiffness before the body warms up. So uh, post 40, 50, 55, all of us find that you take about three minutes, five minutes to feel that movement coming back. And that is, that is what is postural stiffness for us and one need not be worried about it. Thank you. We have a question from Devendra Gang Ganguly who says I'm 60 years old male. Three years back, my doctor said I have a syndrome. I forget the name on account of BP, cholesterol, diabetes by which my vertebrae are fusing together. Is this a common part of aging? No, it is not. Um, uh, normally, the fusion with age can be because of advanced uh, spondylitis, where the discs are getting stiffer, or there is an arthritic condition called as hyperostosis. So these are all age-related conditions, and uh, you need to be more committed to your exercises. That will keep your flexibility for you. Uh, simple therapies like uh, uh, heating therapies, heat pads, massages will also help you to overcome that stiffness. We have a question from Mr. Lakshminarayan, who is age 66. He says he had back pain in 2019 that shifted to his left leg that made things difficult for him to even walk for 10 steps. MRI said this movement and recommended surgery. Second opinion was no different except that the doctor said some try some yoga for three months. If it gets better than health surgery. I went through two weeks of naturopathy, he says, aqua stuff, acupressure, acupuncture, magnet therapy. Ten days later, I had no pain. It was a two-week residential treatment on the outskirts of Bangalore. I weighed 105 kgs then and, and was told to reduce. In six months, I lost 20 kilos and in general, better thanks to 6.5 to 7 kilometer walk and carbless meals twice a day with nothing in between. Still, on off, uh, there's a stiffness of the back is felt. Can this stiffness be done away with? Yeah, so I think, I think uh, uh, if you've heard the lecture, see, a slip disc is an injury. And a slip disc, one can suffer from many times in life. Slip disc always tends to get 
healed naturally. So if you just rest for say about three weeks, uh, control your activities, take pain control therapies like massages, acupressure, acupuncture, the body will heal a slip disc because it's like a fracture of the disc. So in percentage, 90 to 95% of your slip discs heal naturally. But it is a time-taking process. That means you'll have to really be out of your work for about two to three months because the pain will not allow you to work. Now, suppose in a system like the US, where people are really pressed to return back to work, surgery gives you that control in one day, which nature would give you in three months. So this is how the natural versus a conservative treatment of a slip disc goes. But yes, your complication of leg pain, that is a nerve pain has gone away. Now your weight reduction and your muscles will decide how much of load your back can take. So back pain or back stiffness with time is because of the wear and tear and uh, doing the correct exercises for your back will help you overcome that. And you can be a person who might just run a marathon at 60 or 70. Absolutely. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Malcolm Montero. He says, for lower back pain due to muscle spasm, what is recommended to provide relief? Heating pad or cold pack? Or both? And what duration and frequency? Yeah, so uh, I think this is, this is a very common question that is put to us, whether heat is better or cold is better. Uh, actually, uh, truly speaking, both are just surface therapies. It's a feel-good therapy. So as Indians, we are very comfortable with taking heat pads. So 80% would like a heat pad. But the problem with a heat pad is that if you use it for too long, your skin gets discolored, your skin burns. So it is better to use alternative hot and cold so that you soothe your skin at the same time control your pain. But really, it is all a temporary therapy and it is not a permanent cure of your pain. We have uh, Alan Fernandez who asks to ease tailbone pain while sitting. Would use of a pocket cushion be beneficial? If affirmative, if affirmative is there any good brand you would recommend, please? Uh, so, usually... Uh, for coccyx, uh, it, is, it is a ring cushion that is uh, marketed because you tend to sit on a ring and there is no pressure on your tailbone. But some facts about the tailbone is that the tailbone is directly proportional to your body weight. So when you sit, your entire body weight will come on your tailbone. So if you keep your sitting on a soft surface, less than 30 minutes, get up frequently, Avoid uncomfortable sofas, avoid jerky travels like rickshaws and two-wheelers, avoid sitting on the ground. Then a tailbone pain will reduce if you reduce your body weight. So that's a permanent cure for your tailbone. When you come to your coccyx pillows, uh, there are two ways. One is a thick foam pillow, which you get as a memory foam pillow. There are lots of brands which produce a memory foam pillow. So it's easier to carry it everywhere and you can sit on it. Uh, the second one is a ring cushion. <clears throat> there are again multiple brands. You have Viscos, you have Flamingos, you have uh, uh, Bold Fits, you have uh, lots of brands. But finally, it's a ring cushion. So you can sit on the ring, but it's not very comfortable for your back because you are balancing all the time on a ring. Right. Thank you. We have so many questions, Doctor. We are five forty, and I don't think we're going to be able to ask all of them. So I'm going to I'm going to skip those for questions who are from people who are not uh, sixty plus. Uh, if that's okay, uh, we have a question from uh, Uma Ramurti, who says, "I fell down on my back in the year 2020, 2010, but I'm managing with yoga and walking." As you mentioned, excess weight is also one of the causes of, for back pain. What to do for reducing the weight gradually? I have back pain, but I you do yoga for what, for an hour, which I have learned from a yoga teacher. Yeah, so I think uh, it's, it's always a balance between a good high-protein, low-calorie diet, 
uh, I would not rec recommend crashing your body weight because if you suddenly lose body weight, <coughs> sorry, you tend to lose a lot of muscle mass. Uh, but uh, uh, a gradual reduction with a good high protein, low calorie diet and regular exercise. Uh, body weight is the single most factor that causes pain. To be very, very simple, if I lift two kilos in one hand, 10 kilos in my other, my 10 kilo hand is going to get fatigued and drop. So this is my neck, this is my back, and these are my knees. More the weight, more is the pain. It's a very simple logic. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Sudha Jakiyani, who says, I had an L1 compression fracture eight years ago. Is it history or should I exercise? And how? Uh, the fracture has healed. So fracture is no longer the cause of pain. Like I said, it is the gradual deconditioning of the back and one needs to exercise because it's deservicing your machine over and over, over and over again. We have a question from Ravi Abuja who says recent bone density test shows osteopenia in AP spine, femur, neck left and right and left forearm radius. Also, I have disc herniation in neck, cervical spondylitis and lower back. So obviously, uh, uh, see, the reports always tend to, uh, the reports are such that they always tend to exaggerate a little bit. If you look at the bone density report, it is set according to Western standards and uh, post 40, all of us are osteopenic according to the BNB test. So osteopenia is not a disease. The treatment of osteopenia is a balanced diet and exercise. If the values are less than minus two, minus two, then you can start taking a calcium and a vitamin D. If they are less than minus 2.5, then you have to treat it like osteoporosis. So I think in your case, it is mainly a balanced diet, regular exercise, calcium and vitamin D uh, as a sporadic sort of a control for your osteopenia. Uh, again, your slip disc and spondylosis are sort of interchangeable synonyms that you're using. Slip disc, like I mentioned, is a complication and you don't seem to be having one. Spondylosis is age-related wear and tear and that should be controlled with exercise. Thank you. We have a question from DJ Santa Maria who says, can I carry on with my marathon, walkathon at 80 plus? Yes, you are those lucky few uh, an inspiration to most, you can. But uh, if, if it is really becoming painful and if your own body is complaining about it, take it as a morning signal to slow down a little bit. Thank you. We have a question from uh, Mr. Vijendra Kumar. He says, I'm 76. I have been suffering from neck pain and have been on Lyrica 75 for over five years. And this has been a great relief. Doctor, could neck pain be related to spine? See, like neck pain, back pain, all of them are, uh, if you don't have nerve issues, that means you do, don't have shooting pain going into your fingers or if you don't have shooting pain going down the legs, then Lyrica is not the medicine for you. Lyrica is a nerve tranquilizer. That means it puts your nerves to sleep. So in your case, it is acting like a calming drug. It is like a sleeping tablet to you. And now you've been taking this tablet for five years. So the body gets to uh, sort of uh, get dependent on that tablet. And it's very difficult to withdraw it. So your pain has to be controlled with exercise. It does not require lyrica. It is a muscle issue, a joint issue. That is neck pain. Right. We have a question from Dr. Divya Sitlani, who says, how does climbing stairs affect the knees? because it is the best anti-gravity exercise for diabetes. Will it increase the knee pain? Yeah, so uh, like I said, body has three rings. When you talk of the pelvic ring, uh, the exercises are walking, cycling, stair climbing, jogging, swimming. So these are all leg exercises. Uh, when you directly impact your knees, that means you are sprinting, you are jumping, you are jogging, or you are stair climbing. So these are graduated exercises where the, your knees will be the primary joint in question. So uh, doing only one exercise is not good for the body. The load has to be shared between your neck, your middle back, your lower back, your leg. 
So if you keep stair climbing, obviously the leads are going to complain about it. Yeah, right. Uh, we have a question from uh, Aban Dondi. Say, uh, she says, how do you deal with stiffness in your body when you wake up? She's female, 68 years. Yeah, so uh, doing a little bit of stretching while in bed. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, you should first warm up your muscles in bed by doing about 5 to 10 minutes of simple yoga stretches. Once your joints loosen up, muscles loosen up, it becomes easier to get up. Otherwise, you'll have to walk a little crooked, a little bent, a little slow. And then as the muscles warm up, you, you regain that movement. So instead of doing it standing up, you can do it in bed. Doctor, we have still quite a few questions which are, which are there. And I think we're running out of time. Uh, we should perhaps have you over once again for uh, a, a, a Q&A. But thank you very much, Dr. Mihir Bapat, for your session here. Uh, this session will be uh, uh, a video recording of this would be on the Seniors Today website as always on Monday morning along with the with the takeaways uh, which has been written by a, a, a medical practitioner herself so it will be uh, uh, you know you will ensure that everything that is written down also is is, is medically right uh, uh, we have a, a suggestion from Mr. Ramesh Asati, who says, sir, every time the lecture is given in English and not everybody knows English. So what about a Hindi speaking doctor uh, who understands? Uh, I agree, uh, uh, you know, we will try. Uh, uh, you know, soon enough, we'll have somebody who will, uh, who will speak and answer questions in Hindi. Uh, you know, I'm sure if I would have spoken to Dr. Bapat also in Hindi or even Marathi, you would have been gladly. I would have to talk about it. Not a single word in English. I would have to talk about it in Hindi. But the problem is which language. So it's got to be a mix and match of everything. Doctor, the next time when we when you come in, we will speak to you in English. We will speak to you in Hindi. We will talk about it, Ramesh Ji. And thank you for your suggestion. Uh, thank you once again, Dr. Bapat, for, uh, for, for coming here for accepting our invitation and speaking at uh, Health Live at Seniors Today. And um, for those of you who are, are, uh, are regulars and even otherwise, we will be back once again next uh, Saturday at 5 p.m. For, uh, for our next session of Health Live at Seniors Today. As always, we have, uh, as you are aware, we, the fifth season of season five of Seniors Have Talent is on. Tomorrow is gonna be, uh, uh, group B. So please be there. We are working on the next issue of Seniors Today uh, magazine, which will be out on the 15th. Those of you who haven't seen the last last time version, please watch it. And there are just so many hosts of announcements that I need to make. There's Seniors Kitchen, which is there. You must go to the Seniors Kitchen YouTube channel. There are a host of interesting and easy to make uh, recipes, uh, some of which even I've tried. So Try that out. And of course, our daily newsletter and our content updates every day. So uh, do keep checking Seniors Today. And uh, we'll be back once again next Saturday at 5 p.m. for our next session of Health Life at Seniors Today. Thank you once again, Dr. Mirbapat. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.